Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is The Word with Joy. My name is Nima Owori. God bless you and thank you for joining again. Um, so today we're going to continue with The Fall of Man. Um, and if you haven't watched the first couple of videos, I think it would be a good idea to go back and watch them so you can follow the sequence of what's happening. Um, but before I go into that, I just want to welcome everyone again. New people, people who have been watching for a while, appreciate you. If you're brand new, please, um, you know, subscribe so you're notified and also click on the notifications bell so you're notified when a new video comes up i'm not very consistent these days but i do try to keep up as much as possible by the grace of god so i can promise what day the video will be anymore i say tuesdays and thursdays now like and then tuesdays and then it just was like whenever you see it you see it so just um whenever you so it's, it's good to have that notification so you know when i have a new video um and, and the channel is just pretty much about you know bible inspiration how we can grow our faith and walk according to what you know the bible and the holy spirit is leading us as christians and if you're not a christian usually i try to encourage you at the end and we say a prayer so you can become a christian if you have been blessed by the message all right so like i said fall of man um we did talk about like when you go to genesis 3 um you see when you know there was a whole background about you know the the, the serpent talking to eve and deceiving her we talked about how you know he was like oh i'll give you knowledge of good and evil but we don't really need all the knowledge like there's some knowledge that's just not even like it's just not you don't need it right i don't need to know how and like a serial killer goes about doing his, his job like i don't need that knowledge it's evil knowledge right it's just so knowledge of all the bad words that people are saying i don't need it like you know so there how he deceived her and think she needed both type of knowledge and was unnecessary for her um and then when god stepped into the picture and the questions we kind of been digging into the questions god has been asking them he was like um the first one was where are you like adam where are you right what's going on i have an appointment with you you're supposed to be here where are you i'm not seeing you i'm not hearing you it seems like you're distracted where are you you're missing our time together where are you like you know it seems like you are in a place that you're not supposed to be so we kind of like dug into like where are you what kind of what could that mean in many different ways um and the other question was who told you right that you were naked who told you and we talked about the voices that we hear even our own voices contract this is to god voice outside voices that who we're close to that we are allowing to like influence us or the places that we are allowing ourselves to be we may not necessarily want to hear or do what those people are doing but you're in such close proximity that you're not going to miss you know being influenced by what is happening around you even though you know you're not supposed to be there right so who told you like who and who who are you who do you believe like who told you so a part of like who do you believe because if you know a five-year-old tells you um oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a job you just laugh and be like that's cute you know but if somebody who has influence somebody who owns a business maybe says oh yeah i'm gonna give you a job you, you know you know you, you take it with more um you know seriousness you you accept it, you believe it, you look forward to it, you like start making plans, you know, like you do all these things, you're preparing because of the who told you, because you believe the authority of that person to actually like provide that kind of assistance to you. So that's what we talked about last time. And so today we're going to go into the next one. Um, this is Genesis 3, 11 B. And um, the question is, have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? So... Oh, let's pray, guys. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here discussing your word. As the Holy Spirit will speak to us, myself included, whatever needs to be spoken out will be spoken. That which needs to be discarded will be discarded. And in the end, you'll be glorified and we'll be edified. And um, we will take heed to what the Spirit is saying in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so, so God is like, have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you? not eat from like he's so specific it's not just hey did you disobey my commandment like a general thing like i feel like god is so like he's gonna go into that thing that he said specifically it's not just in general be a good person because he gave them specific instructions do not eat from the garden that's in the middle of the, of the garden from the tree that's in the middle of the garden it was very specific and that's why he came back to them and you know bible says that that if somebody breaks one law, they've pretty much broken the whole law, you know. Because why? Because whenever I, I think of, I was um talking to my friend and she was like, oh, what Adam did was like rebellion, pretty much like what Satan did. And you know, it's quite quite true. In heaven, when the when dev, when the, the devil like got his cohorts and everything and they rebelled against God, 
it was in disobedience to you know his authority and who he was they were disobeying who he was right they was disobeying his presence and they wanted to do their own things so it was rebellion and the loss of course and he cast him out of heaven here again unfortunately he creates earth the man is here for him made in his image and likeness and then he makes he gives a commandment and, and, they, and they break it that is like a rebellion again they have disobeyed god again and they're going to take themselves out of his presence that's exactly what happened the same thing like they were driven out of the presence of god why because the bible says a obedience is better than sacrifice that is what the bible says it's like okay god you know sacrifice is, especially if you read the old testament there are chapters and chapters and chapters and chapters about sacrifice oh here's the evening sacrifice here's the morning sacrifice here's the sacrifice for sin here's the sacrifice for atonement here's the grain sacrifice there's like so many sacrifices that no, no, you know people didn't come up with it god came up with it himself it was specific for each you know type of situation who was going to do it when how what you sacrifice you know the way you do it it was very very specific and even though he he did um prescribe it and people were doing it according to his prescription he wants more than sacrifice and he takes obedience to be more than sacrifice why because when i feel like sacrifice is very um you know it's a whole set of rules do this do this do that, do that on this day if you check out the check marks good you know but what is in your own your heart aside from i've done do, 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 and that's it right like it's just like mechanical automatic think of things <laughs> automatic things like your bills going out you don't think about it you don't like go oh um let's see which one should i not pay this week so i can pay the other one right that would be a different situation versus when it's automatic it just goes out and you're not thinking about it you don't even remember because it's just gonna goes and it doesn't affect your life right that's like an automatic thing um or i think of maybe if you're cooking like if you're you're baking something you do all the prep ahead of time and then you put it in the oven you time it you put the right temperature and you just can't leave it you don't like keep checking on the on it and going i mean well guys i'm not a baker so maybe i'm wrong but i don't think so yeah, you, you generally will just set it and forget it kind of thing. Just like leave it and just, you know, go. The time will come off and you take out your cake. Um, but if you're making something like jollof rice, you know, or a soup, you know, like a redu soup or a bono, you know, things like that. You just, you don't just throw everything and then leave it. Like you're constantly checking, you're adjusting the heat, you might add more water, you might put more salt, like you are in there. It, it it needs like a closer what they call it interaction so that's why he likes obedience much better right because with obedience it's not just oh i've done all these things blah done check mark i'm good it's more of like a constant listening a constant like oh god what am i doing today oh god what, what do you want me to say how should i react to this or even just him just giving you information hey do this instead of what you've been doing you know like change what you've been doing like i know this is generally like a religious way, but I want you to do this instead, right? I want you to go this route. Like God might just give you those type of instructions, right? Maybe you've, you always have like a certain amount that you give to one ministry that you like. And then God says, no, this month, why don't you give it to the homeless? You know, why don't you, there's somebody at Stop and Shop, give him that money. Like the one of the workers, the first worker that you see at the grocery side, give it to him, right? And I've done that before where I gave somebody money and he was just like, this is, why? why? He was so shocked, but... I was just obeying the Holy Spirit. Maybe he had to, you know, catch up on some bills or something. And I, it, guys, it wasn't like I just had extra cash. No, it was earmarked for something else. Um, but that way it was redirected, you know. So that's what God is wants. Like with with um, what they call it, with obedience, which is better than sacrifice, is that you're not just following the letter of the law, but you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. You have to listen to what He's telling you and directing you, right? Um, so in in back to the text of why it was important for them to obey is that it took them out of the presence of God, it took them out of His protection. You know, like we haven't gotten there, but the end of the matter was like you have to get out of Eden, kick them out of that beautiful place. You know, that place of it was a place of beauty, place of rest, a place of provision, a place of protection, a place of His presence. Right, everything that is in His presence was there, and they they missed out because they broke. The commandment that he specifically gave to them and that act of disobedience itself takes them out of his presence so we're just gonna look at a couple of examples like um 
to read Genesis 19, 17, talking about Lot's wife. So there was no like rule, but they were given a commandment when, when the angels came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and they said, you they said they should flee. Um, let me see that put it in here. Okay. Yeah. It says flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. And they even give them the reason why. Flee for your lives. Flee to the mountains. Don't stop anywhere. Don't stay in the plains. Otherwise, you will be swept away. Very specific, right? This is kind of a place where you need to pay attention. So I don't know what was going on with Lot's wife. I know I've said this before in other videos. Maybe she was thinking about her friends and her or her property and her designer bags. She's like, wait, can I go back and get it? Um, so yes, so but she looked back, she looked back. Um, and when she did, she became a pillar of salt, you know. Unfortunately, so she lost out of the protection. They had come to take them out because that place was being destroyed, and she lost out of protection because she was disobedient to that specific commandment, right? Um, remember we talked about the in Taught to No War, we're talking about the children of Israel, and when so when they went to Jericho, God had told them, you know, burn everything, destroy everything, don't take anything. It's, it's, you know, do not take anything from here. And somebody who was greedy, Achan was greedy, and he took some items from that place and hid them. And then when they were about to go into another war with AI, um, they lost. And the reason why they lost was pretty much because of disobedience. Um, and this is what God said. He said, Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. It's like, I gave you something. I told you something specific. You, you did not do it. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. This is all. The disobedience led to all this, right? They stole. They lied. They put things that were not supposed to be put with their own stuff. This, that is why, he said, that is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted, devoted to destruction. So, so right there, he's like, I left. You know, you might think that your presence is still here. That's why you went into AI. Like, yeah, let's go. We, we got it. Like we did with Jericho. Mm -hmm wrong god is like i will not be with you until you reverse what has happened here you you take care of that disobedience and unfortunately for it can everybody in his family even his cats and dogs monkeys monkeys donkeys cattle whatever he had whatever he owned everything was destroyed because of that disobedience he was taken out of the presence taken out of the camp and even the children of israel had suffered briefly of course not even briefly people died right in the war they died because of Achan's disobedience, right? And so that was a huge loss just because of disobedience from a specific commandment. Um, the most common one that we know is King Saul in 1 Samuel 15. You know, God had told them to go and destroy the Amal Amalekites in the war, to destroy everything, including animals, and every, just everything was to be destroyed. That was the rule. That was the law. That was the command. That was given, specific commandment that was given to them. But he disobeyed that, right? He was like, he did everything... He killed everybody and everything except the king and also he said you know the goats and cows and like cattle that were supposedly like good you know they looked good in his own assessments meanwhile god has a higher understanding of why he said they shouldn't do that um and he kept it and because of that the kingdom of god the kingdom of israel was taken away from him at that moment you know samuel was really upset and said look god has told has now said he has stripped the throne and taken it away from you and given it to somebody better than you somebody better being somebody who had a good heart remember david was always known as the one who had who was after god's heart someone that's after god's heart is not going to just follow rules 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 and he's going to do a checklist somebody who is constantly in his presence constantly listening constantly obeying um and that's why you know he was that's why he was preferred because with David, God could see obedience. Um, there's also another example of the rich young ruler. I don't even have the Bible verse here, but the rich young ruler had come to Jesus and he was like, Oh, I have done all the commandments, I've done everything, right? Like that's like a sacrifice, right? He has kept every single commandment, which is wild. There's so many, like at least 600. He kept them all. He was very painstakingly, very, very like specific about keeping the commandments. But when Jesus approached him and he came, he said, what can I do? And Jesus was like, oh, well, sell all your property and follow me. And that was a specific commandment to that rich man. It wasn't told to everybody, right? It was like, oh, God is not telling us now, go and sell all your property. That, that was something for him 
to do and he couldn't do it and he left the way sad right he couldn't stay in the presence anymore he couldn't follow jesus anymore because he was like he had put something else higher he couldn't obey this one right so that's the whole um essence of this is that god will tell us something to do or something not to do and we need to pay attention we need to listen to what it is and um don't look at the you know this, the the religious side of it just listen to the holy spirit because he will not contradict the mind of god right so whatever god tells us to do it might not even be like a big thing it could be like a habit that you have that is not even you won't consider it sin right in our eyes but god is like this thing is preventing you from staying in my presence it could be the, the amount of time you spend on your electronic device it's not a sin right but paul says that you know all things are lawful but nothing is beneficial for edification so God might be like, I need you to relax with that TikTok all day, you know, like, you know, so whatever it is, I, I know you guys have heard this a hundred million times. I don't watch movies anymore. That's for me. Everybody has their own specific that God has said. So just pay attention because you don't want that, dis any disobedience to take you out of the presence of God. And there is one more commandment, of course, or a charge that God has given, something that God has spoken to everybody about. John 3, 16 says, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes, that's where it comes, whosoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. If you want to gain everlasting life, constantly in his presence every day here and also there in eternity when we leave. We're not here forever. Even if you live to be 120 years old, I went to a birthday for someone who's 90 and I, I just, it was just so amazing to see, you know, the God's goodness in our life, like our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, and the whole community. Like you could just see that God had been faithful, right? I even met somebody who was ninety four, and she was so strong. Her teeth is like prettier than my teeth, like you know, you know how I have like spaces and stuff. Her teeth is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful teeth. Very strong lady, beautiful skin. I was just like, wow, she's ninety four. But that's the thing, like. You know, we celebrate their long life. We celebrate how God has blessed them and given them strength at this age. But there's going to come a day when we all have to transition. No matter how long we live, we're going to transition. But the point is that where you're going to spend your eternity. Are you going to be in his presence? Are you going to be cast out because of disobedience to this one thing of just believing? Believing. It doesn't sound like a hard thing. It just means obedience. Just believe in Jesus Christ. Believe that he's Lord. Believe that he's God. Believe that God sent him to die for us. Believe that his, his sacrifice was an atonement for our sins and has now exchanged us and our own disobedience and our sinful life to become children of God. Believe in that. Believe in that God's word is true. That gives you eternal life. So I want to pray for you if you are on the channel and you, you and you are interested and you're like i really want to i don't want to be out there out of god's protection out of god's grace out of god's mercy out of god's help out of god's goodness especially for eternity let's say this prayer after me Heavenly father i am a sinner i realize that i am a sinner and i realize that the only way that i can stay in your presence and not be kicked out of your goodness for eternity both here and, and later on is if I put my trust in you and I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Lord, I come to you. Please forgive me of all of my sins. Have mercy on me. I ask that your Holy Spirit will lead me in the path of righteousness. Please let your Lord Jesus come into my heart, come into my life. I receive you. I believe you. I believe that you were sent from God. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died. I believe that you died and you were buried for three days. I believe you woke up, you were resurrected on the third day. And I believe that you are right now in heaven praying for me. I ask that you will come into my life and change my life and cause me to become a son. I ask for you this for eternal life in Jesus name. Amen. If you said that prayer, you have now come into the kingdom of God, into the presence of God. It sounds simple, but it, and, you know, it's, it's obedience. It's obedience. That's all. It's not, you didn't have to do anything. Jesus Christ already paid that sacrifice. But see how obedience is better? Obedience is better because God is like, okay, the sacrifice has been paid by Jesus Christ. The obedience now is for you to believe. That, guys, that's so much easier and better, higher. Because now God knows that you're paying attention, you're listening. You want to walk with him. So if that has been you, please send me a message at the word with joy at gmail.com. Also, you can put it in there comment section and find a church close by a bible believing church where they believe in the word of god and they speak the word of god you might have to go to a couple of places you know to find where it really fits you know but but stay there grow there talk to the pastor and um keep reading the word of god get a bible the version with a um, a version that you can understand 
and keep reading, keep getting in there so you can hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you about what you think you should do about your life. All right, so that is the end of this. Oh, wait, is it the end? I don't know. There's one more question. There's actually one more question. So there'll be another video, but um, it's really been a fun ride and very awesome discovering about these questions that God was asking because these are questions that God, you know, will ask. Might have to ask us at some point, right? Where are you? Like, who told you? Why do you believe that about yourself, you know? And have you broken my commandments? And for us, if you are broken, don't be, you know, don't be down the dumps. Just ask God for forgiveness. He is merciful. You know, go and read about David. God will forgive. God will have mercy on us. He will have mercy. He's a merciful God. He dwells in abundance of mercy. It doesn't mean you should just take it for granted. But at the same time, um, reach back. Don't, don't hide. Adam and Eve were hiding. They didn't go to him. They, when they sinned, they hid. We don't want to do that. That's the wrong direction. Like my pastor will always say, running to God is always going to be the right thing. No matter what you've done, running to him will make, will make sense. It will, it will all fit. All right. So thank you once again for joining. This has been the one with joy. My name is Nima Worry. See you next time. God bless you. Bye.